everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review channel. Sorry for the delay of filming on the channel, but I am a one-man show when it comes to planning and hosting Suppress Fest. So my off days from the fire department pretty much go all towards planning of Suppress Fest in November. So our schedule here for filming is gonna be a little sporadic between now and November, but that's okay, because it's gonna be totally worth it. So today we have the Gemtech Lunar 9 modular pistol suppressor here in the studio. We're gonna cover all the specifications as usual. A little bit faster this time, I'm gonna to try to change up how I do the studio here, really try to breeze through it for you guys so we can do more shooting out on the range. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, now since this is a modular suppressor, I'm gonna cover two different lengths and weights here. So starting out in the short configuration, it comes in in a overall length of 4.7 inches. And in its long configuration, it comes in at seven inches. As far as the diameter, of course, it's gonna stay the same. That's 1.4 inches. And then the weight in the short configuration is seven ounces and the weight in the full length configuration is 10 ounces. Now, as far as materials, so the, the full tube here is 7075 T6 aluminum with a type three hard coat anodizing on it. Very nice matte finish, actually really soft to the touch. Feels really good in the hand. As far as the baffle stack, your blast baffle is gonna be 17.4 heat treated stainless steel and the subsequent baffles in the first module and the second are gonna be 7075 T6 with the same type three hard coat anodizing on them. As far as calibers, it's rated for nine millimeter and subsonic 300 blackout. And as far as the firing schedule, it is rated for full auto nine millimeter only with periods of cool down. So don't just slap this thing on an MP5 and just dump a whole bag, you know, do six rounds, pause, six rounds, pause, stuff like that. So you got to keep in mind, this is an aluminum tube with, you know, a 95% aluminum baffle stack. Now, as far as metering, uh, this is metered by Gemtech in the short configuration, okay, on a Glock 19, 147 grain subsonic ammo. It came in at 134 to 135 decibel range, which is just under the 140 OSHA safety standard. And then with the full length, uh, the module on the front, same host and ammo, it came in at 128 to 129 decibels. So that's gonna sound pretty good in the full length configuration. Those were shot dry, not wet. If you do add some water to the suppressor when shooting nine millimeter, I'm sure it sounds really good. We might try that out on the range if we have enough time, but for now, let's just uh, plan to shoot it dry. All right, now that we have the basic specs out of the way, let's cover the special features, kind of what makes it unique, and then we'll hit that range. So modular suppressor, right? has a total of seven baffles and they do encapsulate themselves, meaning uh, when they are built inside the, the uh, tube here, they form a secondary wall, which means it's gonna be a lot easier to slide them out of this tube when it is dirty, okay? So it's gonna basically form its own tube, right? So all that carbon and gunk and fouling will be trapped on the inside of the baffle stack so you can slide it out easier, so. No more problems like we had back in the day, back in like 2010 era, pretty much everything was a modified K baffle, and meaning all that gunk would spray on the tube, and it was really hard to hammer out those K baffles after uh, a range day. So, capsulated baffle, seven of them. You have three here in the first section, and then four in the module. Um, you know, because most of this is gonna be taken, taken up by a blast chamber area and the booster device. Now to uh, take it down for maintenance and to swap the end cap onto the short module. Pretty simple. On the front, you'll see a square here. That is a 3 8 drive insert. I forgot to bring one here in the studio and I don't think it's wrenched on tight, so I should. Yeah, I can just use my palm there on that machining to get that sucker loose. Now, I, before I take that off, I just wanted to kind of show you guys with the front cap installed, these do en encapsulate a little loose because I loosened the front cap, but these do not slide out, which is nice at the range. So basically to convert it into its short configuration, you would just remove your front cap, set your module aside and put your front cap on the first module. And now you have the short or K length suppressor. So this could be more home defense, nightstand duty, truck gun type stuff. 
just enough to take that edge off shooting in a confined space. And then when you want to impress your friends, build it in its full length configuration and you'll get the maximum suppression out of it, if that makes any sense. Now, as far as the service interval, as far as cleaning, they recommend every 250 rounds. That's uh, easily one cleaning per range trip. I typically don't clean my suppressors because, you know, perks of the job, I have so many of them, I don't shoot each one enough to, to clean it. Uh, but uh, as far as the encapsulated baffles, I'll go ahead and show you here. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there you have it. So they are um, directional, meaning you, you can only put them together one way and the tabs only allow you to do that. thought that was really nice. And the instruction manual that comes with this, very detailed on how to put it all back together. So no worries there. We're not going to cover that too much in the studio. Don't want to bore you to death. As far as the booster housing here, you can take it apart, right? Right here at the tube, which actually that makes cleaning very easy. Uh, a couple years ago, all the companies were doing, basically this was Loctited in there with red Loctite, so you couldn't get this part out. You can remove the piston from this ring in the back, as you can see it's turning here, but you couldn't remove this. So this is actually quite nice. That being said, when this is on your host, you need to install it and uninstall it using the knurling here on the booster. Because if you have this on your gun and you go to remove it from, say, this Glock 19X, when you, if you grab the tube, the tube's just going to loosen against these threads here. Okay, so again, why those other companies probably use Loctite there. You can Loctite it yourself if you wish. I suggest blue Loctite, not red. However, if you just grab it from this section here, the booster assembly, that is where you want to grab it to mount it and unmount it. As far as stripping this down, all you would do is grab this little ring here on the back, unthread it, and then you can get to your piston, pull it out. There's the spring there for the booster. This one shipped with a half by 28. They did not send any more. They send these for test and evaluation. I only have a half by 28, so I'm not going to be able to shoot this on. Well, anything else besides just a half by 28 pistol. I don't have a fixed mount, nothing. So there you have it. They do sell fixed mounts actually. So you could put a spacer in here, right? To negate that spring movement, uh, but they also sell shorter direct thread only housings, which is pretty neat. So once that's all clean and put back together, whoop, we'll put it together the correct way. Thread back on your booster assembly, your baffles. Um, anytime you go to realign uh, a baffle stack inside a tube, always align the notch along with the serialized writing on the tube if you can. And then uh, when you tune it for point of impact shift after cleaning, you know it's going to go right back to where you need it. Um, I'll just give you a quick look here too of the baffles in the front module. They're actually completely different design than the first three, which I thought was pretty cool. You can see here little grooves in it. They're all different sizes and that's why that uh, manual is so detailed. So let's go ahead and just throw these back in here. We'll throw the front cap back on. And Bob's your uncle, you are ready to hit that range again with your Lunar 9. So I believe that covers it for the studio. Like I said, modular cans are all the rage these days. Pretty nice, beautifully machined, well finished. I have not shot this can yet, so let's do exactly that. Let's grab some hosts, let's grab some ammo, let's hit the range, and you guys can make the decision for yourselves on if this is a viable purchase for your next suppressor. Let's get out there.
Everyone, I hope you enjoyed the review so far. So let's go ahead and get to my ending thoughts. So first things first, I did hear some first round pop. So as you know, first round pop is the oxygen and the suppressor burning off. Some suppressors do a better job of mitigating that uh, burn time. Uh, so I did notice that on shot number one on both the Glock 19X and the M9 A3, uh, I did exhibit first round pop. Um, didn't really notice it in the short configuration because the short, short configuration is louder, but in the full length configuration, you can definitely hear that shot one is a little louder. Uh, quieted down a lot, uh, shots two through 17 for the rest of the magazine. Um, long configuration, sounded good. Very good tone, very low tone. Um, did not have any malfunctions on the Beretta. Um, towards the end of the day when I was shooting back here at 50 yards, I did have some malfunctions, uh, fail, uh, failure to feed with the Glock 19X. This gun's a little finicky with suppressors. Can't really blame that on the suppressor. It's really not a good suppressor host. Just FYI out there. Stick with the Beretta if you had to choose between these two. Um, so sound suppression was good in the full length. Keep in mind, uh, we were shooting at 15 yards earlier with the profile views and it's been raining a lot. The woods are full of water. You're going to get a lot of sound reflection and echo and I was kind of in a cubby here with the berm. So it's going to sound definitely louder at the 15 yard mark. Uh, I'm sure it sounded really good to you guys when I moved back here, set the microphone at the berm. So the microphone was 50 yards away. So full length configuration, definitely backyard quiet. Um, for the short length, noticeably louder as we expected. It's only a three baffle K setup in that configuration. Uh, that is home defense, vehicle duty only. You're not gonna press anybody with that. Um, I was not shooting with ears on purpose to really give it a good judge. Strangely enough, as loud as it was, I didn't have any discomfort. I really thought towards the end of shooting here that I would have some discomfort. I don't know if I'm just going deaf, but I have no ringing, um, nothing like that. I wasn't wearing earmuffs when I shot it in the short configuration. So it's weird. It, 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 was, it was doing a good job of uh, almost acting like a blast deflector and, and getting the, the sound pressure away from me pretty quickly. So again, no discomfort in the short, but everyone else could hear it. So there you have it. So home defense, nightstand duty, definitely good to go there. I uh, didn't notice any muzzle flash, of course, it's daytime, but still I didn't see any jetting when I was reviewing the footage here on the camera. Uh, so pretty cool suppressor. Um, you know, at the price point and the company that stands behind it, uh, now that Smith & Wesson uh, has absorbed Gemtech, uh, it's going to be around for a while, I'm sure. So it's just another option out there for 9mm cans. So the more, the merrier. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Huge shout out to two-way warehouse for the ammo. By the way, this is their uh, 147 grain uh, new manufactured ammo that they have on the website. So keep that in mind. Um, it's been running really good, minus the Glock. But again, the Glock doesn't run reliably as it is with other ammo, other suppressors on it. So can't really fault it there. Ran 100% on the Breda, sounded really good as well. So uh, Suppress Fest is in full effect. Between the time I filmed in the studio two days ago and from when I came out here, we've already signed up more companies to come out on the firing line for Suppress Fest 2022. So go ahead and check it out. I'll throw up the banner here so you can check it out. Website, tickets are on the website and they are selling out fast. I believe we have like 28 tickets left for day one and like 100 and something left for day two. Once they're sold out, that is it. We are limiting attendance so the lines are shorter and more enjoyable for you guys out there. So. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. We have a lot more reviews coming. We have a Lunar 45 to shoot. We'll do that in a week or two. We'll have some reviews from Griffin Armament, uh, Tyon Suppressors, and Angstad Arms. Like Their products are coming in right now. So I'll go ahead and get to those, get them online, and you guys can enjoy it. See you next time.